Hello, I'm Toy Cat, and to answer a question you almost certainly didn't have, the most accessible place in the world is probably Ecuador. Ecuador has a visa policy that is incredibly generous, and it means that anyone in South America, just about, can enter with just an ID card, and anyone in one of these green countries can just show up to Ecuador and be allowed to enter for up to 90 days visa-free. It's a pretty amazing thing when you think about it, and even the country's in gray, you just have to apply for a visa in advance. It's not an impossible process, which means the biggest obstacle between you and going to Ecuador is probably time, money, or both. I guess in the age of COVID-19, you need a vaccination or negative test, but time and money are the biggest barriers, but those things can be overcome if you have the will, determination, time, say, whatever else it is. They're, they're relatively easy to overcome, you could argue, when compared to, say, getting to Mount Athos, which sounds like a really nice place. Look how beautiful the monasteries are, and look at look how beautiful the island are. Would you like to go? Well, bad news for about half the planet, because only male residents are allowed to live there, and only male visitors are allowed. This is a uh, it's a pretty crazy policy when you really think about it, and it's even crazier than that because you don't just need to, uh, you know, like obviously uh, enter the EU to enter Greece to get there, but then also you need to, uh, you know, uh, get a <laughs> get a get a written permission from Thessaloniki, uh, getting a permit if you will. Uh, women not being allowed at all, and also overnight stay is forbidden to those under 18. This means that even for men, about a quarter of them who are under 18 cannot stay there overnight. So only three eighths of the world population can stay in this place, and then about half of you watching this video can't even go there whatsoever. I say half you watching this video. We all know the statistics show that if you're interested in geography, about uh, only about 10% of you are. Uh, it, it's it's pretty. You know, uh, if you like geography and you're a fan of this channel, you can probably go to Mount Athos. But it's more effort than you probably want to do, is my point. And uh, I guess we should do like a fan meetup there, right? That's that's a good idea. Let's let's utilize those demographics to our favor. Um, make sure you're over 18. Make sure you can enter the EU. Get yourself one of those permits, and let's check out this mountain. Except, yeah, this is obviously a pretty hard harsh requirement, but it's nowhere near the harshest requirements on Earth, because, you know, being a man is like, it's it's exclusionary to half of the population, but it's relatively easy to fulfill for about the other half, and so what about, for instance, Navasar Island? This is an uninhabited island in the Caribbean. Let me show you the amazing thing, uh, the amazing map they have right here. This is really useful, hopefully explains it all to you. This is uh, Navasar Island, and it's a really tricky place to get to for multiple reasons. It's not only the fact that it's, uh, admit it's it's part United States, but also Haiti makes a claim to it. So which country are you going to? There's probably going to be some nightmare there. Um, it's relatively close to Guantanamo Bay. So I'm just saying you might that if you go there without permission, it might be a bit of a problem because if you would like to go, it is uh, an unincorporated territory of the US administered from Washington DC by the Fish and Wildlife Service. This means that if you want to get in, you're going to need to uh, get permission from that very same Fish and Wildlife Office, which is just funny to me, uh, basically applying for a visa but from the Fish and Wildlife Office. But then even if you can get in, you're gonna need to your access to Navasar is actually hazardous. There is no airstrip on the island, there's no harbors, and the offshore anchorage is the only way. You've gotta to swim to the island, and then what is there once you get there? There's a lighthouse, I guess, at unnamed elevation. <laughs> and yeah, this is one of those hard places to get to. Uh, but I feel as though the US has so many territories where you need specific permission, and it's too easy for thing to say. There's no economic activity, the island's uninhibited, uh, transient Haitian fishermen have been known to camp on the island, and the laws of the US apply. So just watch out, because to get here you need a US visa, then you need to get the Fish and Wildlife Service to approve, and let me tell you about the Fish and Wildlife Service, and then you need to physically get there somehow. It's really hard on all of the levels, uh, but maybe it could be overcome perhaps you might think. Um, so yeah, the next place I want to talk about is one that you've probably seen on maps in question before, because this is a map of the world. In fact, let's, let's show you Russia in particular, right? This is a map of Russia. As you can see, it's an interesting place, but you've probably questioned at least once or twice, like, oh, Russia has quite a few islands, right? There's, there's the October Revolution Island, that's creatively named. And then there's like Bolshevik Island and like, okay. Well, what's the deal with this one though? Look at the size of this island. Even if you think like, oh, that's just Mercator making the island look so big. It's not really so big. If I show you on a globe, you'll see that it's actually hilariously large. It's like the size, if this was a European country, you'd be like, yeah, that about, that about makes sense. So it's not a very populated island. Not many people live there. And because of the fact that it has that fun military, look, look, look at these population this is. Uh, but because of the fact that it has that fun military pass, do you know what it takes to get to, 
uh, Novaya uh, Zemlia. Uh, I'll tell you what it takes to get there. First of all, um, the, the office due to its strategic position has a history of use by the Russian and Soviet military, including being the site of the 1961 de detonation of the Tsar Bomber, the most powerful nuclear blast ever produced by mankind. It's a, it's a, it's a pretty place. They got some wildlife and stuff. But if you want to get in, there's only two flights uh, at, between Arkhangelsk and a military airport on the island. Uh, it's going to be expensive to get there, but also you're going to need uh, you're going to need special permission from the Russian government and perhaps the military itself just to visit. So you need to get to Russia, which just to clarify, Russia's visa policy is pretty unfriendly compared to most places. I mean, I say that like they actually allow most of Europe in with just an e-visa, so you pay money online and then you can shop that way. Uh, but if you're from an English-speaking nation, UK, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, and whatever this one's called, what's this country called? Below Canada, above Mexico. Can someone let me know in the comments? I always forget the name of this one. Uh, but yeah, um, all, all the English speaking countries of the world for some reason. Does, does Russia not like us or something? Uh, but also most of Africa, a lot of Asia. It's it's hard to get into Russia. They've got a very specific uh, visa policy. Unless you're South American, then you're chill. Um, but as you can see, uh, getting into Russia is hard enough. Then you need permission. Uh, then you need to get to, by the way, it's, it's, it's not as if this is like a very uh, common Russian city, very easy to get to. Um, I guess it's a major city by comparison to the island. Then you need permission. Then you need to fly to a military airport, which is only active twice a week. I think that's pretty crazy personally. But but again, we're still talking about within the realm of possible. So let's talk about military bases that are next level confusing. Because do you know how to access... Um by the way, there's a really great list on uh, Wiki Voyage of uh, next to impossible destinations to reach. I think it's really cool that like there's so many places around the world that are tricky. It's it's worth a read if you like this weird trivia. Um, I'm just kind of giving you some of the highlights that I found because uh, you know how there's uh, Navassa Navassa Island. There's also Wake Island. In fact, the U.S. military has so many uh, islands around the world that you need special permission to get to. Um, that it's kind of like a fun contest by itself. But what if I told you the British Indian Ocean Territory is a place that you basically can't get to if you're a British person. In fact, you basically can't get there unless you're, even if you're an American, uh, unless under very specific uh, circumstances, because they're in a territorial dispute, so that's always a fun time. Always means they're going to be extra cautious of people doing crazy things. Um, it's between the UK and Mauritius, a whole fun thing. But interestingly enough, the uh, British Foreign Office says it's not a tourist destination. Access is restricted and a permit is required in advance of travel. There are no commercial flights and permits are only uh, issued to yachts, yachts in safe passage. Um, that word's definitely pronounced Yatch, don't worry. Uh, access to Diego Garcia is only permitted to those with connections to the military facility. If you don't know, the military facility exists because the UK wanted some nuclear submarine missiles and the US was like, hey, you have this territory that would be useful for us because it's a dead spot in our little, uh, you know, zone of control. And so we let the US pull a military base in one of our islands, although arguably not one of our islands. And anyway, so uh, the, the US says that uh, we let them do that. And so if you want to get there, you need a military permit. You need to have connection to the military facility, which means to access this part of the UK, this very beautiful part of the UK, you need to be an American. L look at this. Look at, look at, Oh, that's a coconut crap. Look at, look, look at any of this. This is a weird place that is a part of the country I live in, but I cannot go there because I'm not with the US military. Or I guess on a yacht, technically. I didn't, I didn't read that till just now. That's pretty interesting. Um, but the interesting thing about this is it means that you need to have some connection. That doesn't mean you necessarily need to be in the military, because like I think we went over before, for some reason they send cheerleaders from major American sports teams over to the island. Okay, thank you for the ad that will close in one. Um, they, so as you can see, they send cheerleaders over to keep the US military personnel who are stranded in the middle of nowhere happy. They send cheerleaders over there, which is just... <laughs> <laughs> so you need to be a you need to be an attractive lady. See, this is the opposite of Mount Athos. You need to be a lady, and you need to be very attractive if you want to be sent to this island. Um, but yeah, the weird thing is, I found this a while ago, and I mentioned this in the video that they sent the Arizona Cardinals cheerleading team out there. Do you know what's happened since then? They sent the Tennessee Titans. Uh, I I don't know what sport that is. I'm gonna guess baseball by the the circle over there. Could be hockey though. I'm gonna guess baseball. It's quite south. Um, but as you can see, like, um, what what is happening with this? They they send cheerleaders out to this island quite regularly. This is a also, they must all use the same software for their websites. Uh, but, like, what is what is happening? Why do they do this? I don't understand any of this. But if you want to go to Diego Garcia, a British Indian Ocean Territory, you better be a damn attractive lady from Tennessee, I guess. Or, or Arizona, I also guess. Yeah, these are, like, the same website. They must not be run by the teams. They must, or, or they're using the same... 
Yeah, you know, actually, they're, they're dissimilar enough that I think they just use the same software. That's so interesting, in my opinion. Speaking of things that are interesting, let's talk next about the Paracel Islands, because at least the, you know, being a cheerleader, cheerleader might be within your realm. You know, you can become a US citizen. Yeah, you can become a US citizen. It's a pretty open country. Good luck becoming a Chinese citizen to access the Paracel Islands. So the Paracel Islands are uh, mostly inhabited by a small population of Chinese uh, fishermen who are encouraged to move here in order to bolster the Chinese government's territorial claims. Each resident receives a daily subsidy from the government. These islands are visited by cruisers from mainland China. They're seen as a patriotic destination for Chinese tourists eager to help defend their country's territory. It's uh, So that, that gives you a, a good vibe of the place. But due to the sensitive situation, China only allows Chinese nationals to visit the islands. Access is denied to foreign visitors and to residents of Hong Kong, Macau, and Taiwan. Uh, you cannot go to this place unless you're a Chinese citizen slash resident. Uh, uh, Chinese national, yeah, there we go. Um, and even then, you're going to need permission. And even then, you better be a fisherman or something like that. And even then, good luck getting here, right? Like, by boat. You take a cruise... Um, the cruise lasts four to five days and you can kind of visit for a little bit or you can fly there if invited by the military. Um, you, it's, there's a seafood restaurant on one of them and there's a marine. You, you get the point. It's very hard to go there. If you want to go there, you're going to need to start investing in your Chinese uh, citizenship now. And to become Chinese, you of course need to pass the language test, which brings us nicely into today's sponsor, uh, Duolingo. Duolingo is the great all-in-one service where you can learn to become Chinese if you're really good at it, probably. Um, and I, I bet you'll make the owl happy. Okay, next place is Wake Island. Yeah, I, I did mention it. So this is one of those places that is also very wacky because there's just not commercial air service anymore. Instead, it's an emergency landing strip. And otherwise, it's like, well, if you don't have official business, they just won't let you in. You need prior permission requests and whatever. There's all sorts of weird places like this in the world. Like, just think about it. If you go out to the oceans of the world and there's all these islands, if, if there aren't, okay, so getting to St. Helena and this place, it's actually relatively doable. You have to fly into South Africa on a twice a week flight. It's, it's doable, right? But if you want to go to a weird island where no one lives but some military, you want to go here, good luck getting there. It's just next to impossible by the, the justification of it. Now think about some of these islands which have historically been pretty big military bases. Midway Atoll, good luck getting here. Oh, actually, there's a military base. There's, there's a little, there's little uh, historical places out here too. How fun. But like, yeah, it's very hard to get out to places like this. Um, however, there is a next level of hard to get to, which is when you combine all of these things together, um, which is what we do when we go to the Andaman and Nico Nicobar Islands. So these are a pretty place. They're islands that you wouldn't consider to be part of uh, India by looking at a map. This is India, right? Would you consider this to be India? Well, you should. Even though it's closer uh, geographically to Myanmar, by Burma, it's even closer to Thailand and Cambodia than it is to mainland India. These are governed by India itself. And let me tell you about one of these islands. So North Sentinel Island is the wackiest place perhaps on the planet. And let me tell you about why. Actually, let's let's let the Wikipedia page, the, sorry, Wiki Voyage page do the, the talking. So uh, yeah, the, the Andaman Islands. Uh, here's, here's the big red warning. This is the first time we've had a, oh my God, please do not warning here. So in order to protect the indigenous Sentinelese tribe, it is illegal to visit North Sentinel Island. Like not just like, oh yeah, you just need a permit. This No, no one visits. That island is still cut off from people in the year 2022. Not only can you not go to the island, but the Coast Guard patrols a three kilometer exclusion zone. Do not approach the island as you pose a deadly risk to the islanders through disease. There is also a danger to your own life that the islanders kill people who attempt to visit. And they have done this many, many times. It is a, it's a crazy weird place where you die if you try to visit. Also, there's saltwater crocodiles that are found here and they frequently attack people. <laughs> So that's fun too. I mean, if you if you ignore that and the malaria and the people who want to kill you and the fact that it's illegal and the fact that, by the way, to get to these islands as a whole, even the legal ones of them, all you've got to do is you get an India visa. Not an easy thing to do. Actually, let's find out. How easy is it to access? By the way, a pro tip. You can go to Wikipedia. They've got a fun uh, visa policy for every single country. So like, what's the visa policy of India? It's in Asia. And so we just we just find India right of uh, southern, yeah, there we go. Visa policy of India is pretty harsh. You need an e-visa. Why does the UK not get e-visas for, you know, whatever. You need an e-visa from some countries, but you need a pretty strong visa from the rest, including the UK. 
I thought we were friends, India. Anyway, so you need to get to India, which is hard, which is kind of hard to do. Then you need to get a special uh, little thing. It's called a restricted area permit, just to get to the regular islands. Um, these are issued on arrival now, but they're it's whole whole interesting thing. Then once you've got your your your, your restricted area permit, then you need to get in a boat. Because obviously getting to the North Sentinel Island, if they don't have any contact, you need your own boat. Then you need to break Indian law, in addition to all these steps. Then you need to avoid malaria and crocodiles, and you know what? It's crazy. It's too much, right? And uh, obviously there's nowhere on Earth that, which is harder to visit in terms of why you shouldn't than this. But for my last one, I just wanted to share with you the weirdest thing I found while looking at places that are hard to get to, because this is Palmerston Island. I don't know how I hadn't heard of this, because I love weird islands around the world. Let me show you Palmerston Island. Where, where do you think it is based on the name? It's a part of New Zealand. It's not its own island. It is a tiny little, just, just like how uh, the Pitcairn Islands are a part of the UK, the smaller, I think the lowest inhabited population for a pseudo country in the world, persuado country in the world, um, then uh, it, Palmerston Island is basically the same uh, but with New Zealand. It is crazy how small this place is. Like, look look at these islands. And uh, what's even crazier is the story of how it came to be. So getting there isn't actually that hard. You just got to get a private yacht, which, you know, compared to, you know, breaking the law on saltwater crocodiles, not too hard. About a dozen boats visit a year. Um, and all you got to do is arrange travel on these boats and blah, blah, blah. However, uh, the weird thing about the place is the fact that uh, yeah, so obviously, if you want to go there on some form of scheduled service, you need to call them and they'll help you. If, they'll, they'll be grateful if you pick up some mail from them or something like that. So it's kind of implied you've got to do that stuff. But here's the weird thing. English is spoken there with a distinctive West Country accent. This is the legacy of William Masters, the original settler of Palmerston, who populated the island with the assistance of his three Polynesian wives. The current generation of islanders are his descendants. That was such a crazy thing. Wait, there's a whole territory of New Zealand which is populated by one guy, William Masters, from the West Country, from Vista. That can't be true. And guess what? It is. Palmerston was recorded by Captain Cook in 1774. And in 1863, William Masters, a carpenter and barrel maker, arrived with two Polynesian wives, added a third wife, and sired a large family of some 23 children whose descendants now inhabit Palmerston. And so, um,. If you look even further, it's like, if you read through here, it's like, although only some 50 family members remain, his descendants, uh, there's like a thousand of them that come from that. And now his three original wives make three separate family tribes where you can't marry within it because that would be too much inbreeding. You know what's better? Inbreeding only on one layer. And so I just, I'm so confused by this place. This seems like it would be a quirky side story in a bit too far fantasy game, but there's a real place where one guy, just, just to show you this guy actually, one, one guy that looked like this managed to populate a whole, a whole island in the South Pacific, and that's just the thing you could do if you were born at the right point in time, and I just, I just don't get it. Also, he's got one of those weird things where we think he lied about his death, because it says, uh, that when he died, uh, as you can see, life. He died at the age of 67, but his headstone says 78. So he lied about his age to someone too, which makes this whole story even more interesting. Did he want to do this? Was this his dream in life? Did he like live the dream or was this the, you know, his Polynesian wife and two Polynesian mistresses? Was that the best he could do? I don't know, but I am so fascinated by the story of Palmerston Island, uh, even more so perhaps than the South uh, Nicobar. You know what, whatever. There's weird places all around the world. Basically, if you can see an island on a map, it's probably hard to get there. If it's not a big island with its own airport, did you know going to Hilo, is it pronounced Hilo, Hilo? All you gotta do is you gotta stop in Honolulu and then probably in LA and then you can be basically anywhere in the world, it's easy. But getting to places that don't have airports or air service or ports can be a lot harder. You wanna go to the Antetol? Yeah, there's gonna be lots of steps from you to there, huh? And uh, I just think it's crazy how much of the world still isn't accessible, both on the level of like, really? We still have 150 people? This, this is actually the, I, I think I asked this before, but it's still the big question to me, philosophically speaking. Is it okay to just leave 150 people basically in the past? So North Sentinel Island has an uncontacted tribe that only, in, I think the only Indo-Europeans in the world that are uncontacted, they are living s what you would call a savage life by today's standards. And, um, 
you know, they, they literally, they, they, they use bows and arrows to kill the people that come there. Isn't that the craziest thing? We could make their life so much better by just ignoring their wishes and coming in there. I know this is me sounding British right here, but isn't that, you know, this, this is the whole, like, the issue that empires had hundreds of years ago, but on a smaller scale. Do you have a, uh, an imperative to help people out? Or, sh or if they said they want to be left alone, do you just say, sure, those are the people we leave alone, uh, even though we could help them, they don't want our help, so we shouldn't. I think that's the latter opinion, uh, but I do think if you ever find yourself on an uninhabited island, just remember to use today's video sponsor, probably Duolingo. It's great. They have courses for everyone, including North Sentinelese, and uh, I don't know why I was doing this video sponsorship. I'm just going to keep throwing in random video sponsorships so you don't know when to expect the real ones. Hope you'll enjoy this video, uh, because I'll see you all in... Oh. I'll see you all in the next one. Good, but there's not a single Google Street View for the whole of these islands. Come on, man. Come on. I I deserve better than this. Ooh, we're somewhere. Yeah. Anyway, I hope you all enjoyed, because I'll see you next time. Good woof. Oh, give me money on Patreon. I, I would appreciate it. Link down below. It's no good reason to, but like, I would like it. Who who doesn't like money? It's hopefully not. If, if, if you don't like money, you know where you can give it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, second channel, don't care. Bye.